check it out at the bed and breakfast that AHDB put me up in on a farm in Saltarsh. Really nice. Good breakfast. Now, five, six hour drive back from the bottom of the country to halfway up the country. Wish me luck. It's a Friday. Will the traffic be good or will the traffic be bad? It's 297 miles back to the yard. So it says I'm going to be back. Bear left, noon. then turn right. This is a relatively wide road in Cornwall, but it's actually because it's a farm driveway. It's actually wider than the main road. I've just stopped here to show you this. This is a road. It's so small. Just got back, knack and now, just over five hours. I had to stop for fuel, but I'm back and I'm now on charge. Um, I've got to say, obviously you saw how narrow them roads were in Cornwall. Well, imagine some of this crazy ideas that comes out of government of not cutting your hedges for two, three or five or even 10 years, which they're trying to talk about on this new SFI scheme. If you did that there, the roads would just be completely unpassable. It's just ludicrous. Anyway, back here now where the roads are a bit wider. So I'm gonna go and see what the lads have been up to. This has just arrived, um, fully galvanized off RVW Pew. It is not mine. Can anyone guess who's it's, who it's for? You think you know? Leave a comment below. They've fixed the top now of the silage trailer, so we're gonna put it back on. Unfortunately, um, this needs fixing. So, there's not really much point in putting it on until we unbolt this and weld that up. So we've got the basket on now, I'm gonna lift uh, Rob up, take that off, take it to the workshop, fix this end. And then there's a crease up there as well. It needs straightening out. I don't know where to take that blowboard off the top as well, because when my dad packs the chip down, he keeps reaching over too far and hitting it with the uh, bucket and creasing it. While I've been off on my travels, Rob has dropped the transfer box out of the gearbox on the 1690 so that's what basically sends power to the front wheels because it's a four-wheel drive model so got it on the bench here and it's that bottom bearing can you see it should look like the top one we've got like i don't know one two three four eight bearings ball bearings in it well that's got one two three four five six seven so actually it's still got all eight in but can you see how they're not equally spaced like the top one they've all like fell around to the bottom so that's causing it to to make a funny noise and not work properly. The other bearing's okay. So that one's fixing. Uh, you see actually where it engages itself in and out of gear by that sliding backwards and forwards. This cog in there, or gear, slides backwards and forwards on that shaft and makes it mesh from the top to the bottom shaft. It's a little bit scored as well in there, the, uh, the teeth. So, let's see. In fact, you'd wonder how there's enough room actually for that to slide out of the way. Oh no, there we go, it actually engages from the top by the looks of things. That looked like a fork there to move it. So that moves that, doesn't it? Yeah, it moves the top one. So when you want to engage four wheel drive, that slides across and then teeth will grip on. So that's gear there and puts four wheel drive in. So every time we fix something, me and Rob generally sometimes do it together. Yeah, because I'm filming, everyone thinks Rob does all the work. Which is true. It's going, it's going. See, see how twisted it actually is though. That's why OAP shouldn't drive telehandlers. A little bit of Newton's cradle. transferring from one hammer to the other. We're messing around fixing this and I just looked down and there's a pigeon stood in the trailer. Just standing it up now and we're going to lift it back on. It's a bit, needs a bit of paint on it but it's straight. It's quite handy, it's got fork slots in it, makes it easy to move. So we're going to we had to cut, we had to cut that off because it was proper twisted. 
take the damaged bit out and then weld it back on. So it's a little bit shorter, but it doesn't matter. It just slots in the back of the trailer anyway, but it'll still go in plenty far enough. Is it gonna fit? Well, that's the point. It'd be easy to get in now, because one side's long and the other. That can drop down before the rest. Might have to grease it, you know. What's that? Might have to grease it. Yeah, you know, just struggling to get it to drop in. Know, just needs a slight tweak. Go on. Go on. Go on, it is, it is going. Go on. Go on. Go on. Right, off now. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's halfway there, go again. See how good Rob's weld is. I'm not welding this again. Go on, go on, go on. That's where it needs to be, but you'll have to go past. Go on. Go on. Right, try that now. Perfect. Better than it was. It had a slight twist in it, which we think we've got out now, and we've hung it on a strap so we can manipulate it better and get it in. And now it's jammed. <laughs> Nearly in now, I'm gonna put a bit of oil on these legs or grease, try and get them in a bit better, and then put these bars on. Look at that. That'll look mint on the front of the tractor, won't it? Fraser's handiwork again. <laughs> look at it. <laughs> Class green as well. Red as well. It's good, that, isn't it? Fraser's come all the way from Scotland with these, some signs he's made for us, and then that sign for the front of the tractor for the tractor run. Anyway, we, we walked off to unload his car and forgot we left Rob in the trailer. So uh, we're just going to finish putting this door back on. Right, it's going in now. Oh, just for wood chip, yeah. Uh, Rob's getting it with a hammer. I just give it a little bit of a push on the corner. It's just, it keeps like locking up because they're so long, the, the legs. It's just, there we go, nearly home now. I'll go back to the other side now and push that side a bit. done it before I got there. <laughs> I need to go back to here or is he going to do it? There we go. It's on. It took us that long fixing it. We can't remember where we put the bolts when we unbolted the back. So anyway, we're all stuck inside while we're looking at the bolts. We've been in there for about, getting on for an hour now. So I think it's time we let him out. So are you going to read the birthdays out? No, it's too shy. <laughs> Anyway, I'll quickly do the birthday today. So we've got Jeff Patton up the road, Christine Hamilton, apparently this is better than a card, so there you go. Angus Furley, Eric Shepherd, 95. I'll say it loud, just in case you're hard of hearing, like my dad. Uh, Nathan Shirtcliff, is it, 23. Another Nathan Webb, 11. Jim Millington, and also someone put least we forget and left a donation as well, because obviously today is November the 11th, which is, um, Armistice Day. So there we go, £15,812. So I think by Sunday it might be £16,000. Don't forget, if you want to be on the birthday bumper, scan that barcode or click the link under every video. Don't message me on Instagram and say, how did you get on the birthday bumper? Anyway, there you go. Happy birthday, everyone. That is all for today. I'm quite tired. Going to an awards every tonight with Craig. I um, want to say thank you to the audience last night, the HDB audience, really good at the monitor farm meeting. Uh, in everyone's region so just check them out if you get a chance get a bit back for your levy anyway 
that's about it for today. Thanks for everyone that showed me around over the last few days as well on my whistle top tour to Saltosh and pack. We've got a visitor coming tomorrow, so that might be interesting, and we're going to make something. So I'll see you later, and thanks for watching.